Mariusz Trinkiewicz is undoubtedly one of the most known Polish serial killers. On one side, a friendly and a nice man, and on the other side, pure evil. His actions were horrible and they really stuck in the memories of the Polish people. And some people will never forgive him for what he's done. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Per and I hope that you're all doing great. In today's video, I'll be giving you the story of the serial killer from Poland, Mariusz Trinkiewicz, uh, easily one of the most known serial killers from Poland. Just before we move on to his story, you can also check out the Polish uh, true crime playlist that I have just up here. Also, you can subscribe and like the video. It helps out a lot. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into his story. Mariusz was born on the 10th of April 1962 in Piotrków Trybunalski. In that town, he was a teacher. Uh, he was fairly known by everyone. He was very respectable as a teacher there at that time. Everyone kind of knew him and he had good relationships with the people in the town and uh, the kids he was teaching to. And he really loved his job. Uh, his job was very fulfilling to him. Um, he really enjoyed doing it. Unfortunately, he lost his job in 1986. And this is kind of where all the problems kind of start to happen in his life um, just after he lost his job. In 1988, Mariusz was just walking around his apartment block uh, and just by chance he met this 13 year old boy called Wojtek and they started to talk. Mariusz kind of tried to convince him to uh, sign up for this youth's club where kids basically get to spend time with each other. He was trying to convince him that he can shoot uh, some airsoft guns and Wojtek agreed to it as he was kind of interested in those activities. He knew Mariusz uh, as he was the teacher in his school so he didn't really think much of it he didn't really suspect anything that something is going to happen so they went back together to Mariusz's apartment uh, Mariusz offered Wojtek a, a dinner and as Wojtek was enjoying his dinner Mariusz went from behind him uh, and basically attacked him and suffocated him and later on he took out his body uh, transported it to the nearby forest and he buried his body there. And at that time, no one could really tell where Wojtek went. He was suspected to just gone missing. Um, and no one would really know what happened to him until Mariusz attacked again. On a hot summer in Poland, on the 5th of August 1988, police found three burned bodies of the local boys, the 12-year-old Artur and Krzysiek, as well as the 11-year-old Tomek. The three boys died to stab wounds that Mariusz has uh, inflicted onto them. And this was all done when Mariusz was actually on a prisoner's pass. He went to jail because there were some other instances of him basically trying to lure the kids into his apartment. And this pass was approved to him because his mother was uh, in bad health. Uh, so they released him to go see his mother. Um, and this is when he attacked the three boys and the way he kind of lured the boys into his apartment was by saying that he would let them use his airsoft guns and they agreed to it they went up to his apartment and he started to stab the helpless boys and after a few hours he would transport the bodies uh, of the three boys down to the basement kind of how basements work in blocks in Poland is everyone kind of has an access to the main basement and from the main basement you basically have your own rooms or your basement. So Mariusz was scared that some of the neighbors might smell the decomposing bodies. You know it was a very hot summer. So in order to get rid of the smell he would every few hours come downstairs and pour some disinfectant uh, liquid onto their bodies hoping that it will stop the smell I guess. However he kind of knew this is not gonna work out and a few days later he borrowed his dad's car. He wrapped the bodies up and basically transported the bodies to the nearby forest and that's where he burned the bodies. And the three bodies were found just by passing by a mushroom picker who was just looking for mushrooms and he informed the police. And the police quickly determined that this was some kind of sexual attack uh, on the boys and they started to look into the local people that kind of have the same charges that would line up with this attack uh, and, it, it, and it didn't take them long to find the 26 year old uh, Mariusz and basically that he was on a prisoner's pass and he had the history of doing such things and Mariusz basically confessed to all of the allegations that were put in front of him um, and to be honest it didn't really make sense for him to deny those allegations as there was so much evidence and proof that it was him that done it. The bodies that were found they were wrapped in the same kind of material that the curtains in his apartment were uh, made out of and another material that was found on the bodies was a blanket with the initials MT embroidered onto them which obviously Mariusz Trinkiewicz 
Uh, the police also found a watch that belonged to one of the boys and the whole apartment was basically covered in blood. Um, so there was no denying that it's him that did it. When the people found out in town that Marius did these things, they, they were furious and they wanted him gone. When Marius was under arrest, he underwent a lot of uh, psychiatric tests, which said that he wasn't mentally ill. Uh, he was actually very intelligent. However, he had some personality disorders. Also, at the same time, when he was under the arrest, he showed the police kind of how he did the crime and how he tried to dispose of the bodies. When he was doing this interview with the police, he had uh, a group of people gather around him and basically the police needed to call back up because um, the people that were surrounding him, they wanted him gone. And... Um, and, and yeah, he was in a good situation. And even in the courtroom, he couldn't get away from people basically attacking him, throwing slurs. However, he somehow stayed calm and collected throughout uh, this whole process, which you can probably see from the videos that are going to be playing now. And in the courtroom, he confessed to everything and, and he said that he regret everything that's happened. However, when he was asked if he would continue to do such things if he was released, uh, he said that he would probably do it. Um, so to me it doesn't really make sense uh, when he says he regrets it but he would still continue doing it. Uh, the sentence could only be the highest possible sentence that you could get at that time in Poland uh, which was the death penalty. However his sentence was later on lowered to 25 years in prison. And as we know these kind of people don't have it easy in the prison. Uh, they're basically preyed upon by the other people in the prison. So in order to give him some kind of security. The police bought out some of the inmates um, to protect him while he's in, in jail. And they bought them with cigarettes and coffee. Um, they didn't even get paid or anything. They just, they literally just got cigarettes and coffee. And kind of as we know now, they the inmates did their job properly um, because Mariusz is still alive. So let's look at his past and kind of what made him into this person that he became. Mariusz Trinkiewicz was a single child and he grew up in a fairly good family. The family never had any money issues or any issues um, whatsoever that I could find. Like we know from before, he was a teacher, uh, he then lost his job and he himself said that if he didn't lose the job, um, he most likely would, would not have committed those crimes. Well, and we kind of have to remember that when he was a teacher, he was a respectable guy and, and everyone basically in the town knew him um, and respected and liked him for uh, who he was. He also mentioned that he, when he was a younger child, was used by a priest. Uh, however, that wasn't really confirmed. And in 2014, his sentence finished. People were wondering if he's going to attack again, if, if he's going to be safe to be released into the society. And people were kind of worried what will happen um, next. However, he didn't stay out free for a long time, as there were some inappropriate videos of children found of, on his personal PC. Uh, he collected those videos while he was in prison. Uh, most likely someone from the outside would bring him those videos. And he was charged with five and a half years or possession of those videos. And when he received um, that sentence, he was locked up in a facility that treats these kind of people. Um, he will most likely spend the rest of his life in that facility. However, he isn't there alone. Back when he was still locked in jail, he would receive a lot of emails and letters from, uh, from these uh, female fans. Um, of his and yeah they would basically write to him and he would respond to them and in that way he found a soulmate and they fell in love and planned to get married and have a kid once he um once he has left the prison which he has already the woman that he is with right now says that he's good with kids and that he would be a good father she also has a child of her own um yeah it's uh that that whole situation is I don't know what's going on. And for their honeymoon, they planned to go to that forest when he, where he buried the, the bodies of the boys. Um, I'm not sure if that woman is crazy or what's going on, but it definitely doesn't seem healthy. She also says that he changed and he will never do these things uh, ever again. And she goes as far to say that Marius didn't force them to go with them. He only offered them... Uh, 
um, to use his airsoft guns. When they were walking towards his apartment, she said that they had time to think about it and to see that something was going to happen. And she basically said that it was basically their fault that um, he attacked them. Makes no sense. And yeah, uh, Marius right now is in that facility, most likely with uh, his wife, and they're probably gonna stay there forever. So yeah, guys, uh, this was the story of uh, Marius Trinkevich. I'll be doing another video on some of the theories around this case, the story, and uh, all that's happened. Apparently, there's other people behind, and people say that he wasn't uh, by himself. In, in that video, I'll be also explaining the story of his wife and kind of explaining her background and story and how she and how she got to this situation. Apparently, there's going to be also a movie coming out about him um, in the near future. And yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this story in the comments below. Uh, you can also always check out the videos just here or the playlist. Um, leave a like and a subscribe. And yeah, that'll be it for today. And see you next one.